In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a WhatsApp spam bot. The bot will be able to send around 10 messages per second and we'll be using Python and Selenium to create the bot. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Before we start the video, please remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Also follow me on Instagram and on Twitter for updates on the projects I'm currently working on. Links are in the description. There are a few things we need to do before we start with the actual code. But for now, we first need to go into Chrome because this is the browser that we'll be using in this tutorial. We'll need to create a new Chrome profile because we'll be using this profile to log into WhatsApp. WhatsApp web and by creating a new profile we only need to log into WhatsApp web once and from there the bot will log in by itself. So up here in Chrome click on your profile then down here click the add button. This pop-up should appear so click continue without an account, type in a name, something like selenium account or anything you want really. Choose a color and also make sure this desktop shortcut box is ticked then click done. What should happen is Chrome should now open in our new profile so in a search bar type in WhatsApp web then go into WhatsApp web and now you're going to need your phone to scan this QR code. So on WhatsApp, on your phone, open settings and somewhere you should find an option to scan a code or add a device. So let's go ahead and scan this and after that, once we're logged in and you can see all your contacts, we can finally close this Chrome profile and go to our desktop. Remember when we checked that checkbox to create a desktop shortcut for our Chrome profile? Well, here's the shortcut on my desktop. You should see yours on your desktop as well. What we need to do with this is right click it, click on properties here at the bottom and then here inside of target, look to the far right. Just check what this profile Profile's name is. Chances are that yours should say profile 1 or profile 2. Just remember what this name is and keep it in mind. After that open Chrome normally, open it using your main profile and then in the search bar type in the following address then press enter and this will take us to this page where we need to look for profile path which is here in my case. Make sure to copy this path and then in the windows search bar paste it but make sure to remove the default and then of course press enter. We need to now look for the Chrome profile we just created so in my case mine was called profile file 2 which is this one. What you want to do is take this entire profile folder and just drag it into your main drive. In my case I only have one which is my C drive so I'll drag mine from here to here. After that click on your drive and then in here create a new folder called Chrome profile. And after that's created we want to drag the profile folder inside of Chrome profile. Make sure to then open Chrome profile and rename the profile folder to default. Make sure it's spelled exactly correct. Default with a capital letter D and everything. After that we can almost start coding but we need to set one other thing up real quick which is selenium selenium is a library that handles automation of browsers in our case chrome in order for selenium to work we need to download this thing called a web driver but for chrome you need to download a specific one called chrome driver so back in chrome we first need to find out what version of chrome we're using so click the three dots up here then hover over help and then finally click about google chrome you'll see here that it says i'm using chrome version 99 so open a new tab then we need to go to this site you can find a link to this site in the description of this video we can then see here that there are multiple versions of Chrome driver, but my Chrome used version 99. So I'll be clicking this Chrome driver 99 version. After that, you download the one relevant to you. So since I'm on Windows, I'll be downloading this Win32 one. And once it's downloaded, we can just drag this to our desktop to make it easier to work with. Right click this folder now, and then look for the unzip or extract files option, then click OK. And now you should see a folder that when opened contains Chrome driver.exe. So what I now want you to do is drag this Chrome driver into your C or main drive and after that we can finally start coding. So to start coding make sure you have python downloaded. You can do so on python.org but I do have a tutorial for doing that here at the top right of the screen or in the description. I'll also be using visual studio code to type all our code in. So on my desktop I'll be creating a folder called spambot and in the windows search bar I'll type visual studio code and open it. I'll then drag the spambot folder into visual studio code and then here to the left I'll create a new file. I'll call it spambot.py. Make sure to add this .py at the end otherwise your computer won't recognize this as a python file and your program won't work. After hitting enter we now have an empty python script and we're going to need to import some libraries but in order to do that we need to install them real quick. So in your windows search bar type in cmd and hit enter. This will open command prompt where you have to type pip install selenium double equal marks 3.12.0 and then hit enter. Back in our code we can now type from selenium import web driver then also from selenium dot web driver dot common dot keys as well as from selenium dot web driver dot chrome dot options import options. We'll also need to import time to add delays in our code. We can then set some variables. So the first one is called message and inside these quotation marks type the message you want to spam. So mine will be spam. Underneath it we can set an amount variable which will be the amount of messages to spam. We can then set a delay between each message. This delay will be in seconds. So I'll type 0.5 to add a delay of half a second between each message sent. Underneath that we then type contact and in the quotation marks type the exact contact name that you would like to 
to spam. Make sure that this name matches the exact contact name on your phone. So for example, here I have a contact called test group one. The T and G are capital letters. So in my code, the T and G are also capital letters. We can then create an instance of Chrome options, which we will use to add arguments to in order to launch our Chrome instance in a specific way. So let's add our first argument by typing options dot add argument. And then as a string user data dir equals. Now after this equal sign, we need to add the path that contains our Chrome profile that we created earlier. So if you remember, we put this directly into our C drive. So now we type C colon double backslashes and then the name of the folder that contains this Chrome profile. Earlier I called mine Chrome profile as one word. So I'll type the exact folder name in here, which is Chrome profile. This will tell the web driver to open the Chrome profile that we created earlier. Then type driver equals web driver dot Chrome. This will create an instance of Chrome. Inside the brackets type executable path equals and then the path to the Chrome driver we downloaded earlier. But if you remember, we moved this Chrome driver to our C drive. So I'll just type C colon double backslashes Chrome driver dot exe. Then we need to pass options into the options parameter. This will launch Chrome with the options we specified above. We can then type driver dot get and type the address of WhatsApp web into the brackets as a string. So this would be HTTPS web dot WhatsApp dot com. This code alone should already open WhatsApp web. So if we run our code by clicking the run button up here, then eventually we should see that WhatsApp web opens in this new instance of Chrome. WhatsApp web should load all our contacts since we logged in earlier using this profile. Now that we know it should log in, I'll be closing this Chrome instance and also killing the terminal in Visual Studio Code. I'll then be typing time dot sleep and adding 20. This is just to add a delay of 20 seconds in order for WhatsApp web to finish loading in the browser before we start looking for elements on the page. Then we type name list equals an empty list. We'll use this to store our most recent contacts in order. All right, so this next part might become a bit complicated, but just bear with me. We'll be working with these things called XPaths. We'll be using them to find different elements on our WhatsApp web page. So for example, in order to make our bot click a contact, we need to first of all find that contact on the page and we can do so using their XPath. Now I've already searched the relevant XPaths and this should work for you as well unless WhatsApp changed their code since the release of this video. And just in case that happens, I will be showing you how to get the XPaths yourself. But for now, you can skip to this part of the video and just use the XPaths I provide there. Later on in the video, when we test the XPaths and they don't work, then just come back to this part of the video to get the correct XPaths. Okay, so to get the XPaths, we need to run our code again and wait for WhatsApp web to open and load our contacts. Once we're in, press Control Shift I to open this thing called the Inspector tool. This allows us to see the current web page in HTML format. So here at the top left, click this mouse button and then click on the name of one of your contacts. Any contact should work. This won't do anything to that contact. We just need to retrieve some information. This should now open a new section in our inspector tool. And so if you look closely, you can see that there's a pattern and all of these sections represent your contacts. If you hover your mouse over these, you can see that your contacts get highlighted. So now if we right click on any one of these, you can see an option at the top called copy. So if we go there, then we can see that there's multiple things we can choose to copy. In our case, however, I like working with XPath more. So just copy this XPath. Now don't close this window, just minimize it. So we could get back to our code. Don't kill the terminal yet. In our code, type a hashtag space and then paste this XPath. This XPath represents some random contact on WhatsApp. By changing this number, we essentially change the contact that we have chosen. But I'll get back to this later. Back in WhatsApp web, let's again choose a random contact. Now we need to somehow figure out what their contact name is. I chose a contact called test group here, but nowhere here can we see the contact name. So let's try and find it. We can do so by constantly clicking this arrow. So clicking once, then twice, then thrice. But wait, there's two arrows. So hover over each one and check which one highlights the contact's name. In my case, it's the bottom arrow, but then there's two arrows again. So we use the same steps. Which one of these highlights the contact's name when we hover over it? It was the first one in my case. So then click this arrow again. And then finally we get to a place where the contact's name is visible right here. So make sure to copy this part's XPath containing the name. Back in our code, you can still leave this code running, but create another hashtag under this first one and paste the new XPath. So now we can finally kill the terminal. Like I said before, these XPaths should actually be the same for you unless WhatsApp changed their code. Also, the XPaths will be in the description for you to copy and paste. Our job now is to compare these two XPaths. So in this first one, this number here actually represents a contact. And by changing this number, we change the contact that this XPath leads to. And you can see in this second XPath that it contains the first XPath, but has some other things included. We'll be using this first XPath as a reference to our contacts, and we'll be using this second one to get the names of 
of our contacts. So to do that, we need to type 4i in range 1 to about 15. And under this for loop, we type info equals driver dot find element by xpath. We then type f along with quotations like this and paste the first xpath. At the end of the xpath, remember the number we said represents our different contacts? We need to change that to i. And then before and after the i, use curly brackets. Then use a plus sign and add the second xpath to get the name of the contact. We'll then add the name of the contact to our names list by typing name list dot append info dot text. We then need to obtain the actual contact index we want to spam. So we create a variable called to click and type name list dot index passing contact and then plus one since Python indices start at zero. This will retrieve the index of the contact that we specified at the top here. It's also important for you to know that this will only work if the contact you want to spam is one of your recent contacts. They have to be at least in the top seven most recent contacts to be safe. So if not, just send them a random message to get them all the way to the top. To then make our bot click on the contact, we type driver dot find element by xpath, passing the first xpath as an f string again. And then there where we change the number the first time, we're going to be typing to click inside of curly brackets. And then outside of the function, we type dot click to click on it. Then underneath that, also type time dot sleep with two just to be safe. When we run our code and we wait for the whole login process, which I'll skip, then we can see that once WhatsApp web opens and the 20 second delay is over, our bot will click on the contact we chose at the very start of the video, which for me was test group one. Don't close WhatsApp web just yet. We first need to get one last X path and the one I find should work for you. But just in case, try and do this step as well. This X path is easy to find as well. So press control shift I to once again, open the inspector tool, click the mouse icon at the top left again. And then on the text bar down here, just click it. This will open the section where the text bar can be found in the HTML code. So right click on it and then copy its X path. We can then close this window and kill the terminal in VS code. Now type 4i in range amount and under it type text box equals driver dot find element by X path. And then in quotations paste the X path we just found. To type our message into the text box, we then type text box dot send keys and type message. This message variable here represents the message that we said earlier. To send the message, we type text box dot send keys and then keys with a capital letter dot enter in all caps. To then add a delay, we type time dot sleep delay, and this will add a delay of the amount we specified at the start of our code. Now just run the code and I'll be fast forwarding this part of the video. But once WhatsApp web opens, we can see that the bot waits two seconds and then starts spamming the messages that we asked it to spam and everything seems to be working. We can see that the bot waits two seconds and then starts spamming the messages that we asked it to spam. We can now close this window and in our code, I want to add one last line of code and it's up here. We need to type driver dot minimize window. This will open Chrome and about two seconds later, it will minimize Chrome so that it doesn't bother us on screen. But other than that, that should be it. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also follow me on social media to receive updates on my next projects. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.